my name is John, welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. The first thing I'm going to do on tonight's nightcap is to draw for this little Mercer DTI gauge that my friend Bob kindly gave us. It's a special one this because it's in point zero zero twos as opposed to just zero ones. There's more names went in the bucket this week, and there's 15 or 16 names, not that many. So we're digging deepish, we'll get one out. I've had a good mix up. I'm going to get somebody else to do this next week. See if I have more luck than me picking people that actually want to claim. Right, the name I've got here is Anthony Holland. I think that's a fairly recent one. I remember writing that out. Right, Anthony, all you need to do is send me an email with your address. I'll get that in the post and get that off here. It really is a nice gauge. It's very heavy. Mercer, England, very well made. It's nice having the twin coloured front on it as well. Right, this week's nightcap. Once again, a prize that was never claimed. It's a pair of inside and outside Starrett calipers in a little homemade engineer square. I'll get a close-up shot of them in a minute or two. A little bit of scotch bright and some WD-40 and these will clean up really nice. In fact, I'll clean a little bit up just to show you what they do come up like. They are the real deal, they're proper Starrett ones. That's who made, being made by a guy called Danny. I've checked it against my square and it's absolutely spot on. So there's actually a tool there that was made by somebody, probably as an apprentice piece, I don't know. A little bit of scotch bright and a little bit of elbow grease and these will come up like new. You'll never get rid of all the pit and marks but it will come up very very nice indeed and these are quality tools certainly well worth with it. And the thing is once you've spent a bit of time cleaning these up they're going to be yours if you put your personal little touch on them. As usual, if you want a chance at winning them, all you have to do is send me an email. That's my email address up there. Your name goes in the bucket. If it's drawn out, you get the prize. If it's not drawn out, it stays in the bucket until I'm not doing this anymore, I suppose. On part two of last week's video, the last few seconds or the last minute or so, was some footage of me actually claiming up a, or prosecuting up a, a main shaft that just used in the disused used lead main. I've been editing some film in that clip just happened to be in the batch of clips I was working on, so I left it in. Now, strangely enough, I've had quite a lot of people commenting about it and wondering what was going on. Um, I've got a lot of old footage of that sort of thing, underground exploration is one thing that I used to spend a lot of my time doing. Some of the more interesting stuff I've been put on, possibly a five minute clip at the end of a nightcap. Of People want to watch it, watch it. If you don't want to watch it, just stop the video. It's anyway, I think some of the stuff is good because the engineering on the ground is really fantastic. What well, you think what they did all them years ago working by Carlo Power is absolutely incredible. This is the rotor from a three phase electric motor. Uh, it was running all right, but it was noisy. I pulled it apart, or the lad pulled it apart. And he found this bearing here was slack on the shaft, it's actually been spinning on the shaft. The sure that the bearing fits up against that register appears to be alright, but this is worn down probably 20 or 25 thou. What I'm going to do is mount it in the lathe and I'll machine this bit of damage away from here, weld it up, remachine it and polish it back to size just to try and save it. It is worth saving, it's quite an expensive motor. I've just got this end in the self centered chuck, it looks like it's running through, but I will put it in the four door independent and clock that face in, and obviously that face will be running through because it's in the centre, but the first thing is just to remove the, the damaged metal from there, so it can weld it up. This shouldn't be hard, it's, no, it doesn't need to be hard.
up with stainless, stainless goes into the most things quite nicely. It is machinery only I finished. I've got this set up in my little homemade well positioner so I can rotate it as fast or as slow as I want it. Probably something like that. I've got 160 amp DC T inverter on loan from Arctic and Dolan so I'm going to use that. I've got a gas lens on with a clear Pyrex cup just to tease out the film and to tease out to see what you're doing. So we'll have a go at welding this up. Before I weld it, I think I will put a little bit of heat in the end of there. Just a little bit of preheat, can't do any harm. And then we'll so we can get it welded up. I'm going to weld it with stainless wire. I think it's 316 grade stainless. And that will machine off quite nicely. First thing is, I'll put a little bit of heat in there and then we'll weld it. Straight and working two feet, one on the armpit pedal and one on the rotating pedal. I'm sure I'll probably be able to manage it and see what I've never done before. These are the Banggood milling cutters. I did a review on a while ago. I've used them all the time, especially these ones on aluminium. They come in a little hole that I have with a plastic cover on. What I'm going to do is make a simple holder for them. Just drill some holes in there and screw all the little plastic bases onto there. Then I can have them readily available instead of lying in the bottom of the drawer. Quite a simple job to do. I did try gluing them on in the glue, unfortunately it didn't take. I just drill a hole in there and drill a tap of drill and tap a hole in there and screw each one on in turn. That noise you can hear in the background is me diesel heater running. I've turned the microphone off from automatic and set it up manually so hopefully the sound should be a lot better this week. So 26 and the next one needs to be twenty-five, I make it twenty-six and to see fifty-two. And then twenty after that.
this is a really good opportunity to show you a tool that my friend Bob made for us. It's a tapping block. It's got various holes in from 2 up to 10. And the holes are the correct size, the clearance size for the tap. That's the 4mm. Perfect fit in there. This is made out of D2 tool steel, which he has hardened. You can make it out of mild steel, ordinary stainless steel, anything you want it. It doesn't need to be tool steel. You simply put the tap through it, start the tap in the hole, and the block is held down, and you wind the tap in, and the tap has got to go in square. Very simple, very effective. I have made one or two that I've used on certain jobs where I've been putting a DRO on or a milling machine or a lathe. Ideal. You can also make a smaller one. A 4mm, I think 3.2 is a tap and drill. So you'd have a 3.2mm hole. And it would make sure if you're drilling by hand that the drill would go nice and square. An excellent little tool that I will be using all the time. If it was something really important, you could put a clamp on that and hold it down just to make sure that nothing at all moved. But for what this is going to be used for. It's ideal. There's even a nice little dimple hole in the centre of there where the injection molded them. Four mil hole in there. And just a little a little allen board through there. Still put the protective plastic covers on if you wanted to. I'll cut that off the length. That can be fastened onto a wall somewhere if you wanted it. Or at least I can put them away somewhere and I know that I've got to set all together. Quite a simple little job. It's probably taking more time to video than it actually takes to do to do the whole job. <laughs> 